Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is day 14 of Kaggle's 30 days of machine learning challenge and today is the last day for intermediate machine learning. Today we are going to learn about gradient boosting and data leakage but today is divided into two parts. So this is part one and it's about gradient boosting. What is gradient boosting? Gradient boosting is yet another type of machine learning model. So uh, it's it's an ensemble based model and uh, just like random forest random forest is uh, uses something called bagging gradient boosting uses something called boosting i won't go into details of how gradient boosting works and that is also not required for uh, this tutorial i will probably make a longer video about how gradient boosting works in more details so uh, how it works is you have a naive model it can be any model uh, most of the time it's decision trees. So you have a naive model and that naive model makes predictions and based on those predictions you calculate some kind of loss. So loss can be just a simple mean squared error and based on that loss on that loss you train a new model and add that model to the ensemble and make predictions. So then this cycle repeats itself and that's what is explained here. So uh, we we use a very naive model to make our predictions and um, these predictions are used to calculate a loss function like mean squared error and then we use the loss function to fit a new model that will be added to the ensemble specifically we determine the model parameters so adding this new model to the ensemble will reduce the loss so you in the end you have to reduce the loss and so what adding model to ensemble means is like we in the end we take a sum and uh, we need to say how much each new model should contribute to the ensemble so like kind of like a weighted average um there's not a lot of details provided today uh and we also don't need a lot of details if you don't understand it don't worry about it right now and uh we will look into much more detailed version of gradient boosting later on so here i'm just going to uh, run the cell and it has the Melbourne data set. Uh, we have fixed number of columns to use. We have already used gradient boosting using GBM regressor uh, from scikit-learn in our previous days. Um, but today we will be using XGBoost. So XGBoost is yet another implementation of gradient boosting and one of the one of my favorite libraries. There are many other different variations of boosting. Uh, libraries available, gradient boosting libraries available uh, like cat boost or light GBM. So uh, we are using XGB uh, today or XGBoost. So all we need to do is from XGBoost we import XGB regressor. We can also import XGB classifier if it's a classification problem and then uh, it follows the same pipeline as scikit-learn. You fit the model, you predict from the model. So yeah, very simple. So here it gives you a bunch of different parameters that it's using. So there are many different parameters. There is a base score. Uh, there is column sample by level by node. So many things. And you, if you don't understand all of it, just to uh, help on XGB regressor. And it should be, it should tell you about what each parameter means. Okay. Um, to predict, you just do model.predict, just like in scikit-learn models. And it gives you a mean absolute error. Now they talk a little bit about parameter tuning. So like we did with uh, um, random forest regressor in previous days. So here we try to set the number of estimators to 500 and see how the model performs. Okay, so now my number of estimators is set to 500. There is one more interesting thing in uh xg boost is you can provide an evaluation set eval underscore set which is a list of tuples and here our uh, validation data is provided and now i have early stopping rounds to five so gradi it gradient boosting learns using something similar to gradient descent if you don't know that don't worry about it right now uh, so you have a number of uh, iterations and you should know where to stop so as to not overfit. So if we do that, now it stops with early stopping rounds equal to uh, five. Let's do true. 
And now here it shows you validation zero RMSE, validation zero RMSE. So for each um, iteration, it shows you what the RMSE is and you can see the RMSE is going down. So when it stops going uh, down um, for uh, five iterations, it stops. If your early stopping, stopping rounds is five. So you don't have to train for uh, 500 uh, estimators. Right. And if you don't have that, it's going to train for all of them. And then in the end, you probably have an overfit model. Okay, uh, let me add it back. Now here it sees, see like it goes to 42. So from zero to 42, not to 499. And then you have learning rate. So learning rate is yet another parameter. So instead of getting predictions by simply adding, adding up the predictions from each component model, we can multiply the predictions from each model by a small number, also known as learning rate. So this is the number we multiply each model's predictions by in the loop. And um, what you can do here is you can add learning rate. So one thing to remember is when, when you have a lower learning rate, you should have more number of estimators. There's no rule of thumb, but that's how you decide. So if you have a very small learning rate, you probably need more iterations for the model to converge. And that's it. That's uh, XGBoost for you. A very simple introduction. Uh, we don't have a lot to um, grasp in this lesson, except uh, that this is a new model and some overview on how it works. And you still have to play with all the parameters on your own and see what works best for your model. Okay, let's do the exercise. So if you have a high learning rate, that's not good. If you have a very low learning rate, that's also not good. Uh, if you have a lot of estimators, that's not good. If you have less number of estimators, that's also not good. So these things you have to find on your own by building a function that outputs you a score given all these different kinds of parameters. Okay, so uh, now this is something that we have seen before. Uh, so there are a few new things that I, I will explain. So if we have the training and test data for the house prices regression problem, we split the data, we select the columns with low cardinality, number of uniques less than 10, and we have the numerical columns. And here we keep only the selected columns, so low part cardinality columns and numerical columns. And let's run everything without this part. So what do we get? Uh, we have X test. So we have X underscore train. Okay, and now we run this part. And let's see, what do we have now? So we have X underscore train. And we have some dummy variables, as you can see. So this is like one hot encoding. This is exactly one hot encoding. Uh, and uh, then we are doing this dot align. So what does dot align do? So if you have, if you do help, x underscore train dot align. So it basically aligns the columns and uh, columns. So in x train and x valid, you have the columns in the same order, which is required for any model. So here uh, we will create a XGB regressor model and it also has a random state. And so let's do a random state equal to zero as mentioned and it says leave the other parameters. So now we have to fit the model. So okay, my underscore model underscore one dot fit x underscore train comma y underscore train. Okay. So now you, you you need to generate the predictions. So my model underscore one and uh, dot predict x underscore test. So we have to predict on validation data. Okay. Now we calculate the MAE. So from sklearn dot metrics import mean squared error. Okay. Mean absolute error. The mean absolute error will be y underscore valid comma the predictions underscore one. 
okay uh, let's also print it and see how much we get we get 17662 which is much better than our normal random forest models so here it says now improve the model begin by setting my model 2 to xg boost okay and change parameters to get better results okay so we have to do the same thing xgb regressor and uh, here our code to fit the model my model underscore two dot fit x underscore train comma y underscore train and my predictions will be my underscore model underscore two dot predict x underscore test sorry valid okay and we calculate the mae so mae we can just take this part and we calculate the mae here and we didn't change anything so you must specify parameters in my model 2 so that it attains a lower mae than my model 1 so let's try n underscore estimators 500 learning rate to 0 0.05 random state 42 uh, okay now if you have more estimators it's going to take much more time so we still don't have a better model are we doing something wrong so we increase the number of estimators we decrease the learning rate but we don't have a better model so my model 2 my model 2 ma2 so predict so this should be predictions too so that's our mistake okay um okay now it's fine so yeah we we got a better model now it says break the model so what does it mean in this step you will create a model that performs worse than the original model in step one uh this will help you develop your intuition for how to set the parameters okay so now you have to uh, build a model which is worse than the first one so what is worse than the first one uh, if we overfit it will probably be the worst so three let me change everything to three and here if I just write um, 10 and learning rate equal to 1 very high learning rate very less number of estimators we get a very high mean absolute error so this is what it's uh, trying to say tell you today and uh, yeah easy simple exercise and you must look into xgboost this is going to be very useful for the competition too so see you in the next part until then uh, goodbye if you liked it do click on the like button, do subscribe, tell your friends about it. See you.